I believe it is safe to say that in recent years, no other 3D software has looked as exciting as Blender. The team behind it never fails to deliver with each update surprising us with new features and improvements, all driven by the desire to climb the mountain of industry standard software and to become part of the big league once and for all, or maybe even challenging the likes of Maya, Max, and Houdini. With the coming release of Blender 4, the story is no different. This time, it even introduces us to a new render engine, which holds the potential to make the software take a jump into industry standard status. But wait a minute, if that is the case, then how come no one is talking about it? I mean, can you imagine, Blender of all software getting a new render engine, and it almost feels like no one cares. Something isn't right here, isn't it? So what is the mystery behind this new engine, and what is it all about? Before we continue, do you want to create environments like these? If the answer is yes, then this course by Max Hay is the perfect pick for you. Throughout this training, you will learn how to build each of these environments from scratch, picking up along the way important concepts like composition, modeling, lighting, rendering, and so on. You can also check some of the stuff people created following the course. Another bonus for choosing this course is getting the full fantasy slash sci-fi asset pass, which is fantastic. And to check it out, you can click the link in the description down below. If you have already tried the engine on your own, there is a high chance that you were shocked by how terrible it looks. But so was I, along with many other artists who have shared their opinions on this new engine on online forums. And let me tell you, they are not positive. Some think that the engine is still in beta, with some bugs to fix, while others remain hopeful, crossing their fingers for future improvements. But in reality, it's neither. You see, this render engine is not like any other. It's part of a greater ambition for reasons we'll discover later. But for now, Hydra Storm is a new real-time rendering engine for Blender. And if you are like me, you are probably wondering if it is the second coming of Eevee. And unfortunately, the answer is no, not really. It's actually way more limited than Eevee in terms of quality. That's probably disappointing to hear, but just hear me out on why it is still great news for Blender users. So, Hydra Storm is not meant for rendering. Instead, it is just a tool that could be used for some previews. But previews of what, you might ask? Well, According to the Blender.org page, Hydra Storm has two use cases. One, to show how the scene will look in other software before you export it, and two, to help Blender, add on developers, and pipeline developers as studios to check if their work is compatible with Hydra and USD. We will explain this in a moment. But it is important to note first that it is not exactly a new engine, rather, is the long-awaited Blender version of a rendering architecture with deep ties to the industry. This architecture can be found in rendering engines such as RenderMan, Octane, and many others. The question now is, how is all of that linked together? The engine's roots can be tracked back to the iconic animation studio Pixar. What's particularly exciting about it is that it is a way for Blender to be directly linked to the mainstream CG industry. Let me explain. Hydra Storm is built upon Pixar's OpenUSD project, the very idea that gave birth to the USD file format, which could be used to import and export within Blender and many other software, such as Maya and Max. The concept behind USD was to address the ever-growing need in the film and game development industries. To have an efficient way to transfer, interchange, and modify complex 3D scenes between the different software that artists use in their daily lives. Be 3D models, animations, cameras, you name it. All the good stuff. This technology was more than just a success. It was well received and instantly adopted in the industry. Supported by this quote from Jeff Clifford, a head of research and development for Double Negative at the time, who said, Double Negative has converted many large environments assets from our proprietary software over to USD for testing. Going forward, we are hoping a dedicated team can help test and develop USD to cater for all our scene description needs, including our cross studio collaborations. Now, how is this related to Blender? 
Basically, the second part of the story is what is known as the Imaging Framework Hydra, the rendering architecture that the new Hydra engine is based on. To be fair, it does many things, and it can get very technical, which we can go through in another day, but the main idea behind this today is that it can serve as a bridge between the artist's work and their render engines of choice. In other words, taking the different elements from the USD files such as animations, models, or an entire map, and then transitioning it into a format that the render engine can understand. Actually, it doesn't have to be one but you can have many render engines being linked to it at once. It is also very good at representing complex scenes and previewing it before transferring it. The main idea here is that different render engines use different formats and computer algorithms and all that complicated stuff. But with Hydra, we can bypass and merge all of that together, as long as the render engines support the Hydra framework and USD. Now, to answer the questions we had at the start of this video, Obviously, I can't read minds, and we don't know for sure what the exact reasons that made Blender add Hydra. So take what I'm about to say with a grain of salt. But if we read between the lines, I think this could be part of Blender's secret plan to be integrated into the pipelines of big studios. Or at least it is an attempt of doing that. I mean, it's not a bad software, isn't it? In concept, it can serve as a way to connect any renderer that supports Hydra to Blender. And how many render engines support Hydra you say? Well, almost all of them. Be it V-Ray, Octane, Arnold, or any other one. Because this USD Hydra workflow has already established itself in the industry. And it is used across multiple productions, starting with Pixar themselves, the company behind it, where they used it for example in Toy Story 4. First, it allowed them to finish the aesthetics of the movie earlier, thanks to the pre-visualization features of Hydra, and then they were able to render it more efficiently due to the way the engine works. As a matter of fact, it is a project that surpassed more than 1 trillion polygons, and it worked just fine, in addition to many other benefits. And then, given its close association with the USD5 format, Blender's integration of Hydra can make it theoretically be able to be used in collaboration with other industry standard software like Maya and Houdini. The historical challenge that always prevents Blender's integration into studio pipelines has often revolved around compatibility issues. However, if USD becomes the standard, I can't see why it can't be used in the industry for tasks such as modeling or even animation. Based on this, the potential success of Blender's becoming industry standard through Hydra is based on a condition. Will USD become the most used file format in the industry? Well, we have to wait to see, because at the moment, all we can do is speculate. However, there are certain indicators that suggest a promising future for the format. So, the USD file format gained a lot of popularity and support from the industry, especially following Pixar's decision to make it open source in 2016. Fast forward to last August, and it secured the backing from the industry giants such as Apple, Adobe, Autodesk, and Nvidia, who along with Pixar formed an alliance with the ambition of standardizing and advancing this technology for the greater benefit of the entire industry. Let's take Apple for example, who has been actively experimenting with USD for several years. For example, with their creation of augmented reality file format known as USDZ. Nvidia has even gone as far as calling USD the new HTML. By that, they mean that it has the potential to become the standard format for 3D content creation. Now, will this work finally make Blender an industry standard software? I'm afraid the answer is that it is uncertain. Maybe yes, maybe no. Because determining industry standard software is a multi-sided process, which involves the legal aspects along with financial connections that come with it. The fear of change, in addition to industry norms and tools that artists within the industry are used to. So, as you can see, there are many areas to consider for software to achieve industry standard status. But just like what Lao Tzu said, a journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. And I would like to believe that Blender is on the right track of that. The path is still long and hard and it still also lacks in many areas from a technical point of view. However, with the addition of this new render engine, Blender is playing its card the right way, and maybe with time, it will reach its goal. 
but only time can tell. I hope you guys found this video useful and informative. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. You can also check some of our previous videos. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next one.